Vinyl LPs are a great technology with superb sound reproduction. But they're fragile. Dust, mould, even the oil from your fingertips can get into the tiny grooves and ruin the sound quality. Ooh. There's many ways to clean your albums, but to strip years off your vinyl records, I've got a secret for you. My solution is literally that, a special anti-static substance which is applied to the record one side at a time. Smear the solution into the grooves all the way around and then let it dry. A couple of extended drum solos later, or about eight hours, you peel off the material and with it every speck of dirt or spore of mould. The record should play as clean and crisp as the day it was pressed. Groovy. Please welcome from Cairns, Carrie Stoddart. Hey, Carrie. Okay. How are you? Sure, yeah. Okay. How many records you got? Thousands. Thousands. And you, you honestly reckon CDs just don't cut it? CDs break down after... Well, some CDs have broken down after a period of time. So yeah. as an archive material, they're not very successful But also the sound, you just don't like it, do you? With vinyl records, you're recording vibrations onto vinyl. Yep. And you're turning that vibration back into another vibration. So now, it sounds real. This is your magic solution. That is. Not that it's, it's not magic, it's science, isn't it? It is. And what, you just pour it on? Pour it on. Pour it on. Uh, rounds and round we go, like this. That's it. And then, then what do you do? Get your fingers. Get your, this this yeah. is the fun bit. Yeah, Get your and fingers smear it. and massage <laughs> it in, just like that. Feels good. It does. Feels great. <laughs> yeah. And then, look, here's one we prepared earlier. So you leave it for, for how long? Depends on the humidity, but up to 12 hours. 12 hours, and then you just peel that off. And it just goes simply like this. Yep. And the whole lot comes off. Just like that. Mmm. Mmm. And then if we have a look at this one, this is half on and half off. And if I peel a little bit of that, there we go, you can see, can't you, the difference between the dirty bit and the bit that's been peeled, substantial. And in fact, we've got a close-up of before and after of another record. So this is before, this is after. Before, after. Uh, so it, it obviously makes a substantial difference. Come over to the panel. So you, there's other cleaning stuff out there. You're going to sell that for how much a jar? $60. And that does 16 records both sides, is that right? That's right. Yeah, OK. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard. Carrie, I don't have thousands, but I do have a pretty big record collection. Last year I decided to uh, turn them to digital for my convenience, mm -hmm. and there's a heck of a lot of products out there for, uh, for cleaning them. There is. I'm wondering with this one, the, to allocate a safe, clean, flat space for up to 12 hours might be a bit of an ask. Is there a way of formulating the uh, solution to have the turnover time a bit quicker? The, the substance has to come right down into the bottoms of the grooves mm -hmm. and it takes a long time to get right down into, this, into the bottoms of the grooves. You're also trying to hydrate any of the substances that are stuck into your album. So having it dry over a long period of time gives mm -hmm. you huge advantages. It also means we don't have to use such harsh chemicals so you're not damaging your records. And particularly for the older style before and very, vinyl too. Yeah, yeah. Well, you w we've not tried it on anything other than vinyl, so you wouldn't go putting it on your shellac records and things like that. Oh. What about moment. static? Because that's a, a regular issue with vinyl records. How does this cope with that? That's a huge issue. Static mm. is your second worst enemy with vinyl records, so mm. it's taken us four years to get to the stage where we've got it so that it doesn't produce static when you peel it off. No static. Right. Christine? I've tried using a gel face mask in the past, um, obviously with limited results, <laughs> but it is a similar consistency and I noticed that on humid days it doesn't peel off effectively, little pieces come off. Will that be a problem with your invention? Because Not at all, because what happens is when you peel the first piece off, the rest of it wants to stick to that, so you just take the piece that you've peeled off and just rub it on the piece that hasn't come off and away it Yeah, comes. like picking up Play-Doh when you're kids. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mark? Having had an, an old record collection, the idea of putting your hand on a record just strikes me as, oh my God, that's going to ruin it. So what keeps you from actually Clearly scratching... Clearly you're not a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> what keeps you from scratching the record as you're rubbing the solution okay. into if, it? If you'd had a chance to have a feel of it, you would find that it's extremely viscous and you're not getting any actually get, making contact with your record at mm -hmm. all. Summing up, Richard? Well, records have been around for over 100 years. 
and there's some wonderful performances as well as historical information down there. So being able to reclaim that's a, a precious thing. And if you can get one that works for the shellac and the older style as well, that's going to be a niche market made very happy, I'd suggest. Christine? Yes. The key to success, I think, in this modern market is internet sales. And you've got something which can be sent um, through, the, through the post and, and ordered online. So I think that's going to be the key to your success. You can send it anywhere in the world. That's Mark? Right. Carrie, the record reprogenizer is groovy. <laughs> <laughs> ah, very good. And before you go, a record that we should all know about that you think is just gold. Nat King Cole and George Shearing. Wow. So quick. Please thank Carrie Stoddart. Thank you.